over these last few Wednesdays, we've been looking at uh, 1 Peter and looking at how Peter, the disciple of Jesus Christ, encourages uh, the Christians who are being persecuted. And as he does so, he challenges them to live lives that bring glory and honour to God, no matter what the circumstance is. And as he comes to the end of this first letter, to, to the wider church in a way, uh, Peter concludes with instructions to church leaders. But he doesn't write them a separate letter. He includes it in the main letter. So that the congregations, the churches can see what the advice to the leaders are. Uh, now in the fifth chapter... I'm going to split the first seven verses into three parts. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the authority of Peter. Uh, why should we take anything he says uh, with any interest? Or why should we live our lives according to anything he says or anything he thinks? So it's his, first of all, his credentials. And, and then, secondly, the orders to the... Uh, the church leaders, the the description of what church leadership should be. Uh, and then, thirdly, he speaks of how people should respond to the leadership that God has put in place. So first of all, uh, Peter's credentials. Uh, so he speaks to the elders as a fellow elder. Uh, so he's someone who has responsibility. We know he had responsibility of the church in Jerusalem. And uh, as it grew, we can see in the book of Acts, uh, Peter taking on that responsibility. Uh, when he speaks about the style of leadership, you know, where uh, shepherds, where it's described as shepherds, you can think of Jesus speaking to Peter by the side of the lake and uh, where Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And he says, you know I love you. And then he says, feed my sheep. So he's called to be a shepherd. And that's what you see happening, certainly in the book of Acts, the first few chapters of the book of Acts, where the focus is upon Jerusalem and the church in Jerusalem. And Peter takes a, a leadership position there. So he knows what it means to lead. Now this term elder, it means someone who leads, uh, someone with uh, authority in the church it's taken from intriguingly the the church uh, the way the church was formed with its elders and deacons was very similar to how a synagogue in Jesus day uh, was set up with elders in the church and then uh, other other roles within the church and so the in, in the synagogue so the church follows that kind of pattern and so he's speaking to the elders and uh, and his appeal is as a fellow elder. But it's more than that. He's also a witness of Christ's suffering and one who will share in the glory to be revealed. And so he's an elder. He's a witness. And he's waiting for glory. You know, he's waiting for uh, the, the true glory of what's been going on to be revealed. So he's an elder, he's a witness, and he, like them, is waiting for glory. We are not what we shall be. And it is not yet revealed what we are at present. And so... Uh, here is Peter and he's challenging the church leaders to it. So have a little think about this first section. Who does the advice come from? What's he going to do? He's going to encourage and he's going to challenge as one who's been there before. He's an elder speaking to elders. He's a witness of Christ's sufferings. So he can speak with apostolic authority as one who was with Christ. And he's one who is waiting for the glory of God to be revealed. He understands as yet 
that the real glory of the church has not been revealed. Now, as he speaks to us today, his testimony remains true. Uh, we have his words as one who bore witness to the real living Jesus Christ, who heard his words and was called by him in his earthly ministry. And so we need to take them very seriously. We need to think about them very carefully. And we, uh, we need to also recognise that the true glory of the church has not yet been revealed. Now let's consider Peter's instruction uh, to these elders, these church leaders. But say first of all that they are shepherds, they've got to exercise care, but it's not their flock. This is God's flock. Uh, ultimately, the church is the Lord Jesus Christ's. Ultimately, they, the church belongs to him and he has bought them. Uh, but he has appointed under shepherds and they are to care for their flock primarily by watching over them. Primarily by exercising care for them, uh, by being careful in what is said and done identifying dangers and pointing them out and seeking to lead in the right way. So just as a, a shepherd did, you know, a shepherd looked, watched over a flock, uh, he would seek to identify the sick and the weak, he would seek to identify the, uh, the, the dangers that uh, could damage the flock and he would seek to find uh, fresh pastures for the flock. And, and that, is, that is the kind of uh, illustration that Peter is thinking of, that the Lord thinks of as well, when he thinks of elders. And then in the next section, in the next section, he deals with attitudes. So, not by compulsion, but willing. Not because of compulsion, but willing. Uh, not for personal gain, but giving. Willing and giving, not lording, lording it over, but showing, being an example. We think of the kind of leadership that uh, the world often appreciates and uh, it's a, almost a strong arm you know, looking uh, uh, looking for personal gain. Well, uh, an elder is not to do that. Uh, trying to lord it over people and, and push people along the path that they want them to go rather than leading them. And so, uh, as a, like an Old Testament shepherd, uh, they are willing to do the job and they give to the flock, not expecting to receive anything back and they lead the way and so here is a christian and an elder a leader in a church they have to be willing not by compulsion giving not seeking to uh, fill their own pockets with especially with money and uh, not forcing people but showing and leading by example it's a it's a very challenging kind of leadership uh, but one that is commended by the Lord and by Peter. So here are the duties and attitudes. It's a Christ-like ministry. Our example is Christ. And it involves watching, serving, leading by example. Uh, and we're, that's what we're called to do. We're called to look for uh, leaders within our church who will do this. And we're called as leaders in the church to do these things. Uh, and then the rewards are future. The glory to be revealed. The rewards are future. And uh, as, the, as the leaders of church lead, actually what is being done is not revealed uh, always in its fullness at this present moment. It will ultimately be revealed in eternity. And that will be a surprise uh, for us all when God reveals the worth of of our service and consider the uh, just for a moment the 
qualities of elders, leaders in the church, as described by Peter. Now we are called to consider what it means to be under leadership. So what Peter calls for is submission and humility towards one another because of what God is like. So God, who identifies and calls his people and sets over them leaders, has a particular attitude. And his attitude is very important. He opposes the proud and he shows favour to the humble. So you need to humble yourself under God's mighty hand. In the church it means that shepherds should take the responsibilities that God gives them and those who are the flock should submit and should be humble. Uh, these are very important principles and attitudes and, and actually a church won't function where it breaks down at this level. A church cannot continue, a leader cannot lead and the people cannot be led. Uh, if we start to follow the ideas and principles of this world, then uh, the church is unleadable. Uh, I, we were just saying recently, uh, myself and, and my wife, we, we were just saying uh, who, who on earth uh, could lead or would want to be the leader of a country at this point in time. Uh, leadership is impossible. Uh, the people are almost unleadable. It doesn't matter if we're in America, it doesn't matter if we're in the UK, uh, it just seems at this point in time that the people are not leadable. And, um, and this creeps into the church with world-like attitudes. And say, well, how can I submit to anyone? I don't trust anyone. Well, then this is where you're called to, to obey God and cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. It requires faith. Uh, the reality is that leadership requires faith. Submission. Humility. and faith and this is what God rewards uh, this is what God will bless the duties of the shepherd well uh, we're told what we're to do uh, the shepherded must also fulfill what God requires submit to God and to those working who are appointed by God. Humble, humble towards each other, casting your cares on the Lord and recognising that how God thinks and how God works is he opposes the pride and he shows favour to the humble. Uh, we're living in a very difficult day, a day when it's uh, every every authority is challenged. Secular authority is challenged. Uh, work, authority and work is challenged. And authority in the church is challenged. And we are to submit ourselves to God's way and to God's plans, whoever we are. It's worth uh, just giving that uh, some thought and uh, allow it to uh, work in our hearts and minds and lives. There are leaders who struggle to lead and there are congregations who struggle to be led and all of them have to exercise faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and lead in the way that he appoints. It's very helpful that Peter goes through this with us. It's very helpful. He thinks it's very important, especially when the church is being persecuted, uh, that there be a, a good and gracious and loving leadership and a willing and happy and obedient congregation. May God bless us and may his spirit so work in us that he will overrule our natural desires and our natural uh, thoughts, our natural characters, and that we may become like our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Uh, thank you, Lord, for every 
every goodness that you've shown towards us. We thank you for the church. We thank you that in the church you have set over it and chosen people to lead and given them skills uh, to do so. We thank you for the church on the national stage where we can look at uh, the examples of uh, good leadership. And we thank you for the local church. And we pray, Lord, that as we uh, seek to follow you, as we seek to obey you, as we seek to trust you, you would help us to do so in line with your will and your plan. For you lift up the humble and you bring down the proud. And we recognise that and we trust you. Amen.